I think that 3D animations are really cool, and when I see someone else modeling and texturing something, I always think by myself, damn, that's a lot of work. Honestly, it's not my cup of tea, and that's why I hired Janik and Lorenzo. So if you're like me, you love to create visual effects, but you don't have any patience, then this video is for you. We're going to create and animate a 3D spaceship, the Millennium Falcon, without knowing anything about 3D. Step 1. Look for an interesting object in the real world. Anything that could work as a spaceship. Step 2. We're going to scan this object using our phone to turn it into a 3D model. Now, there are two ways of doing that. The first one is by installing a software called Regard 3D. It's completely free, but it's not easy to get good results with the many parameters and options that needs to be set. And processing takes a long time as it's using your own computer. The second way to scan object is by using a simple app called Polycam. And I want to thank them for sponsoring as well. Now, we made a video about the app a month ago. Go, but that was more of an overview of what the app can do. So anyways, you install and open the app. Unfortunately, it only works on iOS, but they are working on an Android app. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Once you open the app, you can instantly start scanning. On the bottom, you get two options, LiDAR or Photo Mode. LiDAR uses the LiDAR sensor from the iPhone. And this is the iPhone 13 Pro Max, by the way, brand new. Now we did some tests and it, you know, it does kind of feel like Polycam is able to bring better results with this new phone. And I'm not really sure if that has to do with the new hardware or the lighter sensor maybe got an upgrade. I don't know. Anyways, lighter is used for large surfaces or spaces. When scanning small objects like we are going to do, we're going to choose the photo mode. And from a new update, we now get two methods within the photo mode. Either we snap multiple photos from our object manually or we let it take photos automatically, which is what we're going to do. So you just point your camera to your object, try to take as many different angles as possible and automatically automatically the app will start taking photos. Now this is optional, but we found out that the masking feature works better if you hold a white or black panel behind the object. We also attached the falcon to a pin so that we could capture the bottom as well. And once you're done, we're going to enable object masking, which is automatically going to remove everything and just leave us with the model itself. Then hit upload, which is going to upload all of the photos to a cloud server, which is going to use Apple's new object capture API to create and texture the model for you. Now it just takes a couple of minutes because of that powerful cloud server. And once the processing is done, you can view your 3D model in the app. No worries about that spin, we're going to show you in a moment how to remove that. But if you're happy with the result, we can now go ahead and export it to use in After Effects. And I recommend picking an object or OBG file. Now unfortunately, you do need a paid subscription to be able to export, but I've made sure that everyone can follow along with this tutorial, so you'll find a free download link to our scan in the description down below. Now there is one format which free users can export to, and that is a GLTF format which is normally used in augmented and virtual reality. And we could essentially convert that into an object file, but I was not able to convert it with textures. Maybe someone else can find a solution, and if you do, please let us know in the comments. So we've got our 3D model. Next we took a simple handheld shot in which we're going to place and composite that Millennium Falcon in. And Janik, our VFX artist, is going to show you how to do all all of that. Hey guys, Janik here and let's start right away and composite the Millennium Falcon in our own shot. The first thing we're going to do is place our footage into a new composition. Now because we are going to add objects in our scene, we need to track the handheld camera movements. So we selected our footage layer and went to our tracker panel. Here we can hit the track camera option and After Effects is now going to calculate a bunch of stuff and once it's done, you can now see these color tracking markers on our clip. So let's set our ground plane and origin. We just hovered over our points and looked for a spot where our target is laying flat on the floor. Here we can right click and choose the option set ground plane and origin. Once we have that we can again right click on the same spot and create a solid and camera. The solid isn't mandatory, we just want to use it to check if our tracking worked. So scrub to your timeline and if your tracking is a success, it's time for all the 3D work. And now, now comes the best part. Did you know that everybody who has After Effects also has Cinema 4D? Oh really? Yeah. 
I'm not lying, every After Effects user gets a light version of Cinema 4D. You won't have all the same features as the baked version, but for simple 3D animations, just like we are creating today, the light version is perfect. And this leads us to the next part of our tutorial, animating our Millennium Falcon. However, we first need to open up Cinema 4D Lite and also integrate our tracked camera. To do this, we just go to the menu on top in After Effects and go to File. In this menu, we go to the Export and then we choose the the Maxon Cinema 4D exporter option. Now we just save our project and once done, import the Cinema 4D file back into our After Effects project. We place the Cinema 4D file in our composition and next we are going to open up the 3D software. We right clicked on our Cinema 4D file and went to the open option and here we clicked on edit original. Now this will of course open up Cinema 4D Lite with the camera tracking already inside. We just have to import our 3D model now. And once imported, let's scale it up to a realistic size. We all know that the Millennium Falcon is huge, so we scaled it up a bunch. Next up, let's remove the pin sticking out of the bottom. We can of course use the select tool for this and simply delete the pin piece by piece. But now we have a hole in our model. However, because we are using Cinema 4D Lite, we don't have the proper tools to close it. So we are going to fake close it. Just create a plane and with this object we are going to cover the hole. Then we use the Millennium Falcon texture and added that to our plane, making it all blend together. Next, it's time for the animation, but first let's make the new plane we just created a child of our Millennium Falcon. This way they are connected and will move together. For the animation we want the Millennium Falcon to hover upwards and then shoot away. This is a simple animation but of course we need some reference to base the Millennium Falcon on. So first we are going to create a background and on this background we are going to add a texture of our original clip. Now we can simply place the Millennium Falcon where we want, hit the keyframes for the X, Y, Z axis and then go further in time. Next we animated the Millennium Falcon to go upwards but try to keep the animation dynamic meaning that the spaceship won't go upwards in a straight line. But maybe the front part will go up first and the back part of the ship will follow a little later. Oh yeah, one tip, don't forget to hit the keyframe button every time you do an animation. By default, Cinema 4D doesn't auto keyframe. So all your work will be for nothing if you forget to manually push the button. Don't forget. Push the button. And that's it for the animation. Next we just have to place some lights to match the spaceship with the rest. For this we are going to use an HDRI and if you want to know more about how to do that, we'll leave a link to a video where we explain how to use it in the description below. Now we can just disable every layer except for the spaceship and the camera. Then save our project and now head back to After Effects. Here we can now see our animated Millennium Falcon. What we now want to do is add some extra details like placing our buildings back in front of the Falcon, maybe give the engine some light. It's all up to you how far you want to take it. And voila, you are the new George Lucas. And that was it for today guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new. Thank you Polycam for the support and as always, stay creative. This good yoga! Import the Cinema D, Cinema 4D, we right click, we right clicked, clicked, clicked. Why is it when snot in my mom? Before the attack. <laughs> Ik moet me scheren. Voor de Millennium Falcon, we want de Millennium...